All right, to take apart the uh, pump, the first thing we're gonna start with is removing the mechanical seal. So in order to do that, we have to remove the plugs on the unit. Uh, we'll use that. Uh, we'll do that using a 7 16 wrench. So removing both plugs. When the plugs are off, you can uh, remove the two bolts that are holding down that are holding down your gland plate. So gland plate is the portion that's on the outside here. So once Dave gets those bolts out, you can remove the gland plate. Now the gland plate is out. The next thing we'll be doing is pulling off the seat seal. It's pretty simple. Just pull that piece off. Mechanical seal is inside of there. Um, and so because we're dealing with vacuum, we have to be especially careful, uh, more careful than most people using gear pumps. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the shaft of the pump and we're going to make sure that there's no burrs or scratches on there, anything that could damage the seal when it pulls off. So you want to make sure that that's really smooth um, and that there's no markings on there that you think could scratch the seal because there's a Teflon seal inside of that that's uh, holding everything together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a two millimeter Allen key and loosen the set screws on either side and then we can pull off that mechanical seal. So if you look at the mechanical seal, there's Teflon inside of there. That's what we're looking not to scratch with any burrs on the shaft. Then also you'll look on the both sides of that and you'll see that there are the set screws. So those set screws on either side are what you're looking to loosen up. You wanna make sure that those are nice and loose so that they don't scratch the shaft as you pull, uh, as you pull that mechanical seal off. Now the mechanical seal has been removed. Uh, we're gonna take the housing apart. So you're gonna loosen the four housing bolts. And it's going to split into three sections. We've got the front housing, uh, front housing, center housing, and back housing. So we can just now pull the front housing off. Just be very careful removing that. Might have some parts kind of pop out on you here. And there's the gear with the drive shaft, stationary gear. And now we've got everything apart um, and you can take the components out of it and we'll have another video that'll show what each of the individual components are. Uh, we can just kind of talk about that, but now we've got the pump apart. Uh, we can, you can clean it at this point, uh, get any grime or grease off of there. And then after that, we'll start putting it back together. Just going to do a quick run through of each of the components that are part of your pump. First, we've got the front housing, the center housing, and the rear housing. Within the center housing, you're going to have on one on each side. So these are your housing O-rings. You're going to have a total of eight pins, four of which are going to be stainless steel, four of which are Teflon. You're going to have four carbon wear plates. You're going to have your drive shaft and then your uh, drive gear. You then have your idler shaft and your idler gear. After that, we're going up to your uh, gland plate. So your gland plate is right here. You've then got some bolts that act as plugs. So these are just plugs. You then have the gaskets for your seal uh, seat. So each of these gaskets is for your seal seat and your seal seat is right here. We then have the actual mechanical seal. So this is your mechanical seal. We've got the housing bolts and finally uh, we've got uh, a total of three of the bearings. These are your short bearings, three short bearings, and one long bearing.
All right, now we're going to be putting the pump back together. So first, Dave's gonna do is he's gonna take the Teflon pins, install them. It's going to be into your outer housing. Or your rear housing, excuse me. And he's gonna install the bearings, one on each side. Now we're gonna take the front housing Install the two Teflon pins. And then we'll install the bearing. So you'll note on this, you're gonna use the long, one of the long bearings on that. So the short bearing is going to go on the side on your idler side. The long bearing is gonna go onto your drive side. Now we've got uh, four stainless steel pins. These are gonna make sure that the plates sit in the right place. So we're going to install those four stainless steel pins. Those are in. Now we're just going to install the uh, O-rings, the housing. Push those in flush. On either side. Before putting the housing pieces together we're just going to quick go through the orientation of these. Um, you'll notice that on the rear housing the orientation shouldn't matter. You can go either up or down. Either way you place that it's going to be just fine. And then on the center housing you can place it either way. It doesn't matter if it's I guess you could say left or right. Um, either way you install that it's going to be just fine. However there are a couple orientation pieces you need to be worried about. One you want to make sure that if your feet are facing downward, so that's where you actually bolt the, house, the pump in, that the long side of the front housing is in that same direction. So right now we've got the feet down, the long housing, the long side of the front housing down. We'll need to connect it that way. Now we're putting the pump back together. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the rear housing and the center housing. Those two pins will hold it in place. Make sure it fits exactly where you need to go. Now you're gonna add in the carbon wear plate. Uh, there's two relief grooves on that carbon wear plate and you'll have to want to pay special attention to how we're lining those up. So we're gonna insert it so that the relief grooves are facing towards the center. Then we'll put in our other carbon wear plate. And we'll have those two relief grooves lined up so that they're facing each other. And then also you'll notice that the relief grooves are on the center side of, or on the central of the center housing. So they're facing inwards right now. Next we're gonna install the drive with the drive gear. We're gonna install this in the bottom of the pump. So on the same side as the feet. Then we're going to install the idler gear. It's gonna sit on the other side, just like that. Now we're gonna install the carbon wear plates. Again, we wanna make sure that the relief grooves are facing inwards towards the center of the pump. So you'll notice now when I look at it, I can't see either of the relief grooves. Those have been faced inward towards the center of the pump. Now we've got the gears and wear plate in place. We're going to install the front housing. So you're gonna grab the rear housing and center housing with one hand. Take your other hand with the front housing and very carefully slide the shaft through the front housing. You're gonna then rotate the shaft and ensure that you don't have any grinding or that, so that the shaft can move freely. Now you've got that done. You're going to insert the housing bolts. There's gonna be a lock washer and a nut that you put on the outside of that. So that's again on the rear housing side. And just tighten those hand tight and get all four in.
Dave, once we get those hand tight, uh, you're going to take a wrench, 7 16 and then a... Uh, 3 8 Or 3 8 excuse me. So we're using a 3 8 wrench. And we're going to tighten those up. And let's go one by one around the pump. Now we got the housing bolts tightened down. We're just going to do another quick check that the shaft rotates freely. Now also, because the seal is a very important part, we want to make sure that there's no burrs or ridges on the shaft that could damage that mechanical seal. Mechanical seal placement is extremely important uh, because when we're placing the mechanical seal, uh, we want to make sure that it is actually sealing against vacuum. You'll notice that the mechanical seal has a little bit of compression in it, and the recommendation is that this is compressed 1 16th of an inch. I'm going to hand it over to Dave who will show you how we make sure that this is compressed 1 16th of an inch. First thing we'll do is we'll apply the seal with the carbon pointed out. And then we'll use the gaskets as almost like a feeler gauge to so we're putting, measure. Yeah, so we're putting two gaskets on one side. And we're pushing that all the way down to the end of the front housing. Now we've got that in there, we're going to take the uh, actual set screws and we're going to tighten those down on the shaft using a two millimeter uh, Allen key. Tighten down one of our set screws and you're going to spin it around and tighten down your other set screw. And now with it set we can put it in its normal orientation and you will be able to feel a sixteenth of an inch compression. So now we've got the uh, seal seat in place. We've got one Teflon gasket on each side of that seal seat. And we'll just put on the final plate. Tighten those bolts down. Dave's using a torque wrench that's going to set this to 40 inch pounds. 40 inch pounds. If you don't have a gauge, you can just do that about hand tight. Then we're going to insert the plugs on either side. You'll need Teflon tape on these plugs so that they seal appropriately. Then again, we're going to set those to 40 inch pounds. If you don't have the proper gauge, you can just do that wrench tight. Just applying a little bit of force, but you don't really need to crank down on it all too far. Then you're going to rotate the shaft and ensure you still get good rotation. Now your pump is reassembled and ready to go.